Hi everybody, it's Gary Lucas, and it's Tuesday again, Tuesday again, you know, it's like a Moody Blues song, uh, anyway, I'm here with Caroline, she's kibitzing, <laughs> she's busy over there, uh, maybe she'll join us uh, and sing along with this one, but probably not, I doubt it. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's March 30th. Can you believe already it's the end of March and we're leaping into spring and I'm so happy as is everybody else in New York and I'm sure all over the place. The weather is super nice today. But I thought I would play solo electric for you. Uh, so here I am and, and here I go. This is uh, him a l'amour, kind of. This is uh, this is my uh, my street beat. Uh, uh, these were a sequence of, of flourishes on the guitar with the effects that uh, I found particularly hypnotic, and one day just started to to play, and I had Jeff Buckley over here sitting on the couch where Lulu normally perches now. Uh, and he just picked up a microphone and started to sing. And I just kept playing and I didn't know what he was singing. I wasn't really concentrating on his lyrics so much. But when we were done, he said, oh, that was him a l'amour, Edith Piaf song. Okay.
what's going to emerge <laughs> in these improvs.
see there's all sorts of uh, corners uh, one can go to in these improvs and uh, I want to thank Downtown Music Gallery for mentioning me in their uh, weekly newsletter. It's a great, great store. If you happen to be in New York City, please go and visit them. They are a true treasure of uh, great music available in uh, many different formats because they have a lot of vinyl and even cassettes. Uh, they'll buy collections too and uh, they have really reasonable prices but as far as the latest in new music they're pretty much the go-to store and so anyway uh, I'm friends with them a long time I played there earlier in my career way way I don't know 30 40 years ago about it seems well 30 years ago and that was when they were known as lunch for your ears and uh, that was a lot of fun I, I know there's a clip or two of some shows that I did must have been about 1988 in that store uh, they had a ver couple of different locations but now uh, they're firmly ensconced on the Lower East Side. I don't uh, think it would be remiss to go pay them a visit. Frequently, uh, they'd love to see you. And tell Bruce hello if you see him. And the reason I just mentioned it is because as part of the plug, they mentioned that I'd be playing songs here. And, uh, but I also do improvisational music and I'd like to mix it up so I could hear about six or seven different songs right there um, uh, emerging. And that's the beauty of music. It's really like recombinant DNA. Uh, really, if you get right down to its essential molecular structure, it's, uh, it's all there. Even uh, though here in the West, we're pretty much imprisoned in the 12 tonal system. There are explorers who have really delved where not other people pretty much uh, in this sector of the world like to go into quarter tones, into interstitial sliding music, but I, I would say that's foundational to me in my approach because what is the blues if not made up primarily of microtonal slurs? You know, uh, very subtle variations and when I'm playing, I do it, you know, by bending a string, but there's a long tradition of this. I think it's, essentially it's an emulation of vocal music, and that, uh, you know, I mean, there are all sorts of things that can go into the rubric music, but one particular area of it that appeals to me the most is music that utilizes some sort of blues feeling, and I hear it in so much diverse music around the world, including Indian music, Jewish music, Arab music, Celtic music, I hope I'm not leaving any ethnicity out here, but uh, it is definitely something that's shared uh, universally, probably because this emulation of the human voice, at least in an instrumental version of this, is something that unifies every buddy because we all can resonate with it you know when you hear uh, an instrument really where the guy or, or the gal excuse me no distinction there is trying to talk through their instrument in emulation of the human voice uh, that's something we can all share be it a cry of ecstasy or pain uh, it is fun <laughs> fundamentally human or a bark of a dog over there yes Lulu just got activated. She did her her afternoon stretch, and now uh, maybe she thinks there's a home invasion about to occur here. I don't know. We got new locks on the door, so I feel pretty secure. But we're so lucky to have Lulu as our early warning system here in the, here in the apartment. So I wanted to thank. I got some some beautiful feedback in the form of uh, some nice love at PayPal this week from Mark Green and then I just got something today I think it's Stuart Henry I gotta check my notes excuse me no no dead air dead air but uh, I wanna get this one right Stuart
Edward Lenny from the UK, I believe. And much appreciated, always. Always, and keep those cards and letters coming in, folks. Uh, what can I say? Oh yeah, there was also a beautiful comment that appeared on a YouTube posting. I post all these shows, sometimes it takes a couple of days to get around to putting them up, but I do repost them on YouTube, plus they're all archived at GaryLucas.com. There's at least 144 of them since lockdown. And uh, I got a beautiful user comment about how they look so, for this person, so forward, very much forward to my shows, because it was helping keep them sane in lockdown. And, you know, that's a beautiful uh, sentiment to me that really resonates with me, because, you know, <laughs> as I made a, j a joke on Passover, I'm only in it for the chorosit. I'm only in it for trying to instill a sense of sweetness and lightness, even with music that might formally sound very foreboding or abstract. It's all part of the process, folks, of taking it in and letting them out. See, Lulu has no problem letting it out, does she? She's celebrating. This is today, by the way, National Bipolar Day. And uh, yes, we all of us seem to have a touch of it in this precinct. And <laughs> I'm going to have to get up. Let's see if Caroline can do her number on Lulu. We, we have a spray that seems to quiet her down. Although it's, yeah, okay. Uh, Caroline, that's <laughs> way to time. I would love to point the camera over there, but I, I will get some nasty blowback. But uh, Kevin seems to know how to how to pacify Lulu in times like this. Basically, throwing a little soft rubber ball around or a, a plush toy. And as you've seen shots of the apartment, you know we have a lot of them. And so, okay, what else can I tell you? I just got in the mail. Only because I've seen this movie too many times and I decided I had to read the book. Cormac McCarthy's No Country for Old Men. I think this is one of the best Coen Brothers movies, although every time it's on and I want to revisit it, if Caroline is there, she refuses because she abhors violent films and I don't blame her, but this one is so well done and so viscerally... Uh, Creepy and compelling, and yeah. But that's why we have Lulu around to mitigate against all these emotions. I mean, it's great. I recommend dogs, guys, uh, you know, and I'm definitely into animal liberation, but I've never, the dog is definitely the most, they will love you unconditionally. <laughs> okay, wait a second. Helen is doing her dance to spring, right? That's very good. Yeah, well. Really, what are you watching this for? I would love to just turn the camera around. No? Okay. But uh, she's got Lulu pacified there for the moment. Maybe she's coming into frame any second. I'll point her out. But, but anyway, so I'm looking forward to reading this because I haven't read this guy. And I meant to read The Road when it came out. That's supposedly another great one, science fiction. Uh, yeah, you know, there's too little time and so many ways to occupy one's mind. But uh, reading is my preferred mode. Or a good film, preferably in a cinema. Now, they seem to be coming back. We hope they're coming back. They've opened a few in Manhattan, but with a very limited capacity. I want to go see this new film from uh, Serbia that's playing at the Angelica Film Festival. I love Serbia. But I don't know if I'm going to... if. I'm going to be able to get over there anytime soon, and then, yeah, it's like everything seems to be a little bit of what they call a Shrek these days. I'd also like to call your attention to a new article, <coughs> whoops, that got posted at midnight last night on PleaseKillMe.com's website. This is an excellent, an excellent <coughs> online magazine of writings, primarily about music, in all its myriad formats, but mainly on the rock tip. Uh, and, but also, you know, many good pieces about various avenues of culture that remain largely unexplored uh, to this day. So I, I contributed a piece 
in the form of a memoir of a very memorable collision of two larger-than-life personalities who it was my great pleasure to, to befriend and uh, to try and make stuff happen with, and that would be Arthur Russell, celebrated, legendary, downtown, if you like that term, uh, guy, uh, composer, cellist, songwriter, disco, maven, uh, enigma, very, very creative, probably after Captain Beefheart Tom Van Vliet, the most creative musician I'd encountered, and I've met a few and worked with many. Uh, and Vin Diesel, the one and only action hero star of many a franchise, I guess the most popular being the Fast and the Furious franchise, which features Oh, uh, let's say, who is that? Karen, who's the female lead in Fast and the Furious? Is always in there. No, we know that, but wait, it's uh, Jordana, Brewster. Jordana Brewster, who is the daughter, I guess, of the old uh, president of Yale University, Kingman Brewster, who was <coughs> very much operating when I attended that hallowed university. She's great in it. Uh, we always enjoy seeing these films very much because Vin goes way back to, we knew him back in the day as Mark Sinclair, same last name as Caroline. And uh, anyway, I've tried to give you a flavor of what was going on in that period, circa the mid 80s. And so check it out. It's a good uh, long read. They even unfortunately chopped a bit out of it but uh, say la vie uh there's some good stories still <laughs> uh, left to be told there believe me and uh, i'll save that one up for another occasion but but check that out and and what else oh yeah we put a new clip together i want to thank so much dave pearson for this dave and my other friend triple a are two uh people who definitely have devoted a lot of their time to uh, to trying to create some visual splendor around uh, my web series, whatever you'd like to call this, uh, three times a week live streaming thingy, uh, and also on my latest album, the essential Gary Lucas. And I'm supposed to pick it up, but I think, well, you know, <laughs> and I've mentioned it before, and I will mention it again. But check it out because there's 12 unreleased tracks. I haven't stressed that enough, but I will do it again. I recently contract, contacted my friend Mike Shore, who I've known for years, who was a good guy and a friend and was a very active writer about rock music and other music back in the day. Was a news writer at MTV News, was in fact the guy who called me to tell me Jeff Buckley was missing on that fateful afternoon. Anyway, uh, so I contacted Mike and I said, I'd really like to send you this thing. And he said, well, that's okay. I think I got all your stuff. Uh, and I said, yeah, but there's 12 unreleased tracks on it. Aha, uh -huh. okay, well, so that perked his interest. But he's a completist on my work, but most of you are probably tuning in or not. So there is a whole cornucopia, a treasure trove of uh, unheard music waiting for you to be discovered, waiting for me to have you discover it, I should say. And with that, I don't know, I guess I've uttered my last utterance for this afternoon. Uh, him a l'amour, don't forget, now that appears on a Knitting Factory album that Hal Wilner produced, entitled Song, Songs to No One, the music of Jeff Buckley and Gary Lucas, it's early work of ours. It came out in 2002. It actually charted in France, and uh, there were about five different international editions. There was a Japanese edition, a Canadian version, a UK version, what else, a French version, and uh, a US version, and it's a good one. And Hal, you know, God rest his soul, 
did an excellent job chopping and channeling it. So this is the opening track, Him El Amor, as mentioned. I wasn't sure what we were doing <laughs> as far as what song we were playing. It just seemed to evolve in the playing and uh, started out with that music that you heard at the top there. And we just took it from there. And then at the end, Jeff said, okay, that was Him El Amor. So going into the playback, I picked out the fact that he had indeed sung beautifully this Edith Piaf standard. So check that one out. And, and so I will see you on Thursday. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. Love you guys. And uh, okay, let's talk.